All right, let's see what's in here. Now, I was actually quite enjoying the time I was getting um, some companies sending me some free cameras because the, the ones they were sending me really good quality, you know, high end cameras, quite expensive ones, and they didn't cost me anything. So, if anyone wants to send me some more cameras, that'd be great. I'll do some reviews on them. Um, in the meantime, I'm having to buy my own, um, so my budget's a bit smaller. Now, let's see what these are. I don't know which ones I've actually purchased. Uh, 3.6mm lens. 3.6mm lens, both the same. So, I only need to show you one of them. So, here we go. Um, this is an indoor use one. Nothing particularly exciting about that. Build quality, yeah, the plastic feels a bit cheap, but they always do these days. At least they're doing the budget ones. Standardised kit. I mean, I'm sure all these cameras are made by the same place because they've all got the same fittings and well, identical. You know, this is identical. You know, it's almost like they're all made by the same company with different names on. Um, anyway, so angle bow, base, tilt, thermal raise as you'd expect it to. Mounting ring. Just come apart, clips on, looks of it. So, yeah, it's got a microphone on it as well, this one, which is good because this is what I wanted. I wanted ones that can record audio as well inside. Um, yeah, nothing particularly exciting about that, I suppose. We'll move on. Um, specs. Uh, let's see, any specs in here? Standard CMS logon and stuff, all your CMS already installed, so I don't need to do any of that. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Didn't see any specifications in there. We've got mobile apps as well we can get. Obviously. Yeah, anyway, so, yeah. Yeah, okay, it'll be alright. It's just a budget one, which will be fine. Now, I think I already know what this is. I'll figure out how to get into it. Anyway, it's in pretty quick. Yes, it is. Okay. These are new PCBs for the uh, leakage tester slash breakdown voltage tester. Um, these ones are courtesy of PCB Way, so they've actually um, collaborated with me on this. I should try and say that again. They've collaborated with me on this and um, sent me some PCBs for free, uh, no charge. So um, these will be used in the leakage test project. So this has got some slots and stuff cut in there. And, um, they all came out okay. This first time I've done slots on anything I've never done before, so it's um, pretty interesting. Let's see how they came out. So it looks, at least on the surface, it looks okay. Um, let's get one out. Wanted to get boards made, and I've actually just ordered some from them, so I've, I've actually used them myself previously. Um, you know, paid for their services, whereas these ones are free. So, uh, and it's now been what a week? Yeah, a week, just over a week since all of them. So that's pretty good. So yeah, the um, they all look absolutely fine. I can't fault them from what I can see. The quality looks exactly what I expect. Just like I've always had from PCBWay, perfectly fine. Um. Yeah, the alignments look good. It's as I designed it. So any errors would be my own part, probably. Anything I've done wrong. <laughs> so, cool. Let's see what we've got in here. I like those old pass the password games you just played as a kid at birthday parties. I think I won. This is a NVR Hick Vision, I guess that's what you call it. 
And this is actually, this isn't actually for me, this is for um, a local business, I'm going to say. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to say local business who asked me to um, help them out. Knowing that I'm into geeky stuff and you know, stuff. And um, they asked me if I could uh, help them out with a security system for their place. So this is a part of it. Um, they just want cameras and, you know remote viewing, that sort of stuff, so I got them this. That's one part of it. Um I suppose it's all the all the standard stuff. Gigabit, it's got eight port PoE on the back of it. Um let's open it up and actually have a look, shall we? Make it more interesting. Alright, so there's the front, pretty much what it looks like on the back, on the box there. And there's the back. So um, IEC cable connector which is always nice so some proprietary thing um, LAN USB 3 HDMI VGA audio in and out and 8 PoE ports now, like, PoE is really handy because means then you don't need to use a separate switch as well um, PoE switch so actually ultimately reduce the cost um, it's, you know you've got to spend $150 or so on a PoE switch to run it all as well and um, yeah so all good now the thing it doesn't have a hard drive in it i've got to get a hard drive to put in there um you can get um surveillance grade i think it's uh western digital do a purple range um they're for surveillance cameras because they're designed for that continuous writing um workload i'm not going to open this up right now oh should i i'll open it up i'll come right back all right so i've got the screws out let's uh open it up and get the thing to pop open. There you go. And there's not a lot in there, is there? <laughs> All right. Massive case, very little actually in it. That's the way these things are these days. So, got a nice little power supply. Delta, I don't know that brand. Was it 12 volt and 52 volt output? 52 volt because of the PoE. Uh, two and a half amps PoE and five amps of 12 volts. So 12 volts obviously run the board itself. So inside here we've got mounts here for two drives, we can run two drives in here. Um, I'm guessing that's actually a good um, a good option for reliability. Is that way if one drive fails you've still got a second drive which is working which may be yeah, load balances or something, I don't know. I'll have to look into that part of it. Interestingly the PoE section is on a little daughter board which plugs into the main board. So maybe that's an optional part. Um, you might find you can actually run cameras off the LAN rather than just off the PoE. Might be able to have LAN cameras which you can detect as well. It might be that this is an option. Quite likely actually. Let's just zoom in a bit more. Zoom. Right, there we go. There's a focus thing, is that right? So obviously that's the brains of it there, nice little heat sink which is slightly crooked. O C D alert. Um so obviously there's a LAN USB on that point, so as I was saying, I believe you could probably, based on this configuration, it's likely you can actually use LAN cameras as well. Um, I'll have to look into that, I might actually just try that and see if it will actually recognise cameras on that LAN port instead of the ones on the PoE ports. Um, obviously that's the 52 volts coming out here, which has got some local regulation. And some diode protection, little crystal oscillate here, there's a little controller there, little controller chip. Um, some devices here, I'm guessing these are like uh, um, buffers or something. I don't know, I'm not familiar with the architecture, but I think they're, they might be transformers. Maybe like these transformers on Ethernet ports. And it's got some diode protection across here as well, a whole bunch of diodes. And uh, yeah, so it's not a lot to it. Top cables going to the front panel there, which is mostly empty. Just this little display over here, which I can get it to just there. Um, yeah, so not to it. So a couple of uh, SATA ports inside and a DC jack. There we go. That's the inside of our NVR. As you can see, there's not a huge amount to it. Not a huge amount at all. A lot of technology, certainly, but um, you know, big empty box. See what this is. 
you may remember I got some of these recently as well, but with the Tilting Bale section on them. Now I believe, based on the quality of these and the fact that they all look identical, somebody is making these. Um, that's injection moulded part, made in USA. So interestingly, I think someone's making these things. I should really get an original one and compare it. Right, so this is an original HP foot, and these are ones which have arrived. Now you can see there's some design differences here. So this isn't an original HP foot, it's one that someone's making. Which is amazing that someone's actually gone to the effort to design a mould to make these feet. That is stunning. I mean, it's not, it's fairly cheap to make moulds these days. Um, I don't know, something like this, so it's a fairly complicated part. How many cavities is this, does it say? There's no cavity numbering on it, I can see. It's a jet pin, I think. Or is that a subgate? Hmm. Yes, it pins on this side, the jet pins this side. Um. But yeah, someone's designed this mould and see they've obviously based it on the original part, but they've got some slight differences there. This bit here is much more flexible than this one. This is a bit stiffer. Maybe that's part of the plastic, you know, the plastic aging going a bit more brittle and, and stiffer anyway at your age. It may be that originally it was better. But they've obviously based it on this design. Because you can see the text is the same and everything. Um, this bit here is obviously different. Holes are different. But it's purely... Cosmetic, it doesn't actually affect anything. The feet alignment, the actual pins that go through, there are some differences there. Um, we'll have to see how they do on a test fit. See that? But, you know, on the surface, it looks like a genuine HP foot, but obviously, it isn't a genuine HP foot, it's a copy. But it's a pretty good copy, really. It, it looks like it's functionally going to be fine. I'll do a test for it in a minute on a piece of gear and see how it actually goes on. Um, so the original feet have is these little locking pins so you can shove in. Right, so when it's actually on a piece of gear, you can put this pin in and it actually stops the foot from getting caught and pulled off accidentally. Right, so the question is, will it fit on here? Well, it does, but it's very loose. Um, Maybe once it's got some tension on it, but no, I don't think that's right. I don't think this pin's going to fit properly. It kind of does, but it's very loose. Um, this one here, it's actually being gripped. That's not going to fall out. So there's a bit of a difference there between them. But, yeah, so someone's making these things. This is made in USA. Um, a mould like this, I don't know, you're probably talking... I'm going to assume a single cavity mould. And I'm trying to look for a gate. I don't see the injection point. Oh, there it is, right there. So that's a subcated mould. So it could be a mould of cavity, it could be several cavities. Um, but I'd be surprised, really, if it is mould of cavity, it could just be single, because the um, the level of demand for these things surely isn't going to be the highest. It's not really worth making mould of cavities for it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What's a mould like going to be? Single cavity is probably 20 grand. Something simple like that, straight in and out. Yeah, quite possibly. Because once you've got the CAD drawings of the actual part you want, the, the those drawings are then used to make the mould. So, anyway. Cool. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll do a test fit and see if it actually fits. Well, I just did a test fit this one and yeah, it goes in. It's actually very tight. The, the original one was quite tight as well. I had trouble getting that one, getting, getting that one out. Um, so the fit is as good as the original. So there's no concerns there, it actually seems just fine. These are on eBay, these feet. Um, the person selling these things. So now I've got a nice little stock myself, so whenever I get a piece of HP test gear come in, which I'm repairing, um, you know, which I've purchased to do repair videos on, I've got spare feet to put on them, which is why I got them. So it's great to see that someone's actually making these. Very nice. 
I might chuck a link in below for the eBay auction, but if you just do a search on eBay for HP feet, I'm sure you'll find them. Alright, next thing, see what's in there. Hmm. Did I wrap it up in the bubble stuff? I didn't. All that bubble stuff in there, and this was on the bottom of the box. Also not smart. Anyway, this is just a um, two terabyte hard drive, for a little two and a half inch form factor. Nothing particularly exciting. Seagate one. Um, yeah, don't have much to say about that one. And a new. Um, NAS box. Now I've already got a NAS here. Um, this is to go somewhere else as a secondary system. I didn't need a full massive NAS unit. Um, so I've only got a two bay drive this one. Two bay NAS. So they have a four bay. Okay, so as you can see, it's a Synology, small little unit. Uh, how do we get this thing open? It's got no screws in it right now, it looks like. Let's pull off something, slide. I'm going to have to figure out how to get into this thing, aren't I? It looks like a side panel. Okay, how do we get into it? <laughs> oh dear. It looks like there's no screws in there, so it looks like it must just open somehow. There's no sign of any movement. It is going backwards. Let's slide backwards. Where are you going? There we are. And it's a drive base, so it also takes two and a half inch drive, SATA of course. Um, it's got a couple of USB 3's on the back there, then, and 12 volt power. So, pretty simple device. There's nothing particularly special about this one, it's just a really basic one, fairly cheap. Um, I think it's probably the cheapest 2 bay I could find. Um, because I, only, I still only want 2 bay. I do want redundancy on it, I do want to have, was it RAID 1? I can't remember now. But I do want to have redundancy between the two drives, so they're both um, parallel drives, same data on both. Um, but that's it. Um, it's not a particularly critical function it's going to be having. So I'll be playing with it later on. I've, I've already got Synology RAID, or RAID uh, NAS running here. Um, and it's running as like a backup drive for the whole place. All, that, all of our computers go to that. And it works fine. Can remotely access it if I need to get files off it, that kind of thing. So, thank you very much to my Patreon supporters, um, much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting me to help me buy items for mailbag or projects to work on, you know, bits of test equipment to repair, that kind of thing, any money that goes, goes towards that is helpful because it is expensive buying test equipment to do repairs on, especially if I'm not actually going to be using it that much or it's something I could do without. Or, you know, as in most cases, you can do without things. So having a Patreon supporters and people that donate to me via PayPal is, is very helpful. So if you're interested in helping support me and um, you know contribute to the channel, um, then please check out my Patreon page, my PayPal donation options, which are down in the description down there. Click on the Show More tab, this is down there. So um, thank you very much for not supporting me. Of course, that would certainly be appreciated because this is an expensive hobby. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Click the bell icon. Bye.